Hello there, and welcome back to another UPA battle for you guys. It is week 9, and this is going to be a pretty hectic week. I have a lot of notes to talk about, so let's just get into it right away. Uh, my first note here is that I'm recording this team builder off of OBS. It's the first time I'm doing that. I used to do it off Audacity, but I didn't download Audacity to this new computer. And the audio quality will be different, closer to what it is like in the battle. But just know that's a little bit of a tweak difference there. B, this video has a lot of cuts and editing involved with it. Me and my opponent had a lot of connection issues. We never disconnected, but we had to wait a long time in between turns and moves. And it's just a bunch of boring space I had to cut out, so the video isn't an hour and a half long. So that's why it might be a little bit choppy this week. Finally, our opponent is Sir Jorge. And he makes great content, so please make sure to go check out his channel in the description below. His link will be prioritized as I always prioritize for my opponents. Uh, he is in like straight middle of the standings while we're near the top. If we do win this game, we do clinch a playoff spot. So the sooner the better for me. We might have to ruin some playoff dreams to clinch a playoff spot early, but you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Anywho, that's all I have for the notes. I got through that actually pretty quick compared to what I thought I was going to. Uh, looking at our matchup this week, it's pretty even, but I'd honestly give it to Sir Jorge a little bit, just because he has so many threats that can break through my team pretty easily. So I definitely have to watch out for that in the battle. Uh, you guys don't know his team, and I can get listed off now. So here we go. Sir Jorge's team this week consists of GMAX Gengar, Urshifu Rapid Strike, Darmanitan, Skarmory, Espeon, Galvantula, Reggie Drago, Serena, Paliswine, Carbank, and of course, Lolanegi. Now, a lot of threats. We can start to talk about them. First, G Max Gengar. This is, well, it's a G Max Gengar right off the bat, right there. Uh, this is the second G Max, second scariest G Max I've gone up against this season, next to Inteleon. This thing is extremely hard to deal with just because it has good coverage moves. I do have some Pokemon that can sort of deal with it, but the fact that this thing can max ooze into any coverage move and kill my entire team is very scary, and it is really threatening. He can't, he can't run every single coverage move though, he is a little bit pressed for that at least, which is nice, though figuring it out means I have to sack a few Pokemon probably. So that's one threat. Urshifu Rapid Strike, I don't have a switch into Bandit if it is, or Bulk Up. Uh, Rotom Wash is not a banded CC switching, and fighting my team's already a little bit weak to fighting coverage, and the fact that my fighting resists just die to surging strikes is a very big threat as well. Have to watch out for that. And then finally, the last like combo I want to talk about is sticky webs. Galvantula isn't really good against me, though webs are. Keeping webs off the field is really tough because my defogger this week is Rotom Wash, and Rotom Wash doesn't really pair up well against Galvantula. So I definitely have to try and prioritize getting webs off the field. And Reggie Draco under webs like Specs Dragon Energy is kills like everything on my team. So I really have to be very cautious around that, that Pokemon particularly. That is so scary to switch into if it's Scarf or it's just on webs Specs. Those are the biggest threats. There's a lot of other things too I have to worry about. A Piloswine's annoying. A Serena I don't have a great switch into. Darmanitan exists. A lot of big things I have to worry about in this game, but luckily he can only bring 6 Pokemon, and there are some weaknesses with this team. He has no Ghost Resist, so Frostass looks really good. He has no Dark type, so Sigilyph is also coming this week, as I've sort of mentioned. And that is basically uh, like the biggest uh, weaknesses of his team that I'm going to try and exploit. Charizard also has a good matchup, so I can use that late game if I use it correctly. But I'll talk about the sets in a few seconds when I get to them. I did have like 6 Mon and 7 Mon Syndrome. I did not bring Dragals this week like I wanted to. I'm bringing GMAX Charizard, Ferrothorn, Crocodile, Sigilyph, Rutom Wash, and Frostlass. So, you know, switching between these 6 and Dragals was really tough, but I did drop it. And it does cause some problems, but this is what we're going to be rocking out with this week. First Pokemon, as I had mentioned, this week is Charizard. This is G-Max, it has 236 speed with a timid nature, 2 outspeed or Shifu, 120 force of attack, and the rest in HP with the assault vest, moves being flamethrower, hurricane, scorching sands, and dragon pulse. 
Now this is a great cleaner if webs are up on the field because Charizard ignores webs. Uh, otherwise I might go a different route, but I do still like Charizard endgame regardless. I'm not running heavy duty boots this week. I am not doing that because I'm running Assault Vest, because uh, Rotom can destroy any rocker that my opponent has. The only Rotom, Rotom can only not beat the Webber on their team, and again, Charizard doesn't care about webs, so it's completely fine. I think I'll be able to keep rocks off the field this game. Uh, I have the HP extra HP investment, because usually I run a Lost Attack, but I did this just so I can live a Scarf Rock Slide from Darmanitan when I'm G-maxed. I thought that would be very helpful and could make a difference in this game. And finally, he really only has two defensive answers to this, being the Palaswine and the Carpink. Personally, I think Palaswine is going to come just because it's a little bit better in general, though Carpink might be a little bit of a better answer to Charizard particularly. But anyway, these Pokemon aren't the biggest deal, but I could see one of those two coming solely for that reason. But otherwise, because of the AV, I can take on Gengar fine. I can take on the uh, Espeon and Galvantula quite easily and then get my G-Max boost up because G-Max moves are insane. And that's going to be Charizard. Use it in, in game and see where it goes. So we can move on into our second Pokemon, which is the Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn is max HP, 116 defense, and 140 speed def with the sassy nature. Holding the leftovers, moves being a Stealth Rock, Leech Seed, Gyro Ball, and Protect. I went back and forth for this last move forever. Would I run Protect? Would I run Power Whip? Thunder Wave? I wasn't sure what to run. I went Protect in the end just because I like the ability to stall out G-Max turns from the Gengar, scout out for like Scarf or Manda Darmanitan's movesets, stuff like that. I think it would be very helpful. And Power Whip was really only for the Urshifu, and I'm never really staying in an Urshifu anyway, so unless I make a prediction, I don't see myself ever clicking that button. But this is a very good special wall. It beats a lot of my opponent's team, like Espeon, Galvantula. It's my main Reggie Drago switch in, Gengar, stuff like that. Ferrothorn just completely walls. Yes, I have to deal with those mons passively if I want to go to the defensive route with Leech Sheet, Protect, Gyro. But I think it's still going to be very amazing in this game. And I think Ferrothorn's going to put in a bunch of work, as long as I don't sack it to something stupid this week. So. That's going to be Ferrothorn. Our third Pokemon is going to be Crocodile. Crocodile is max attack, 180 speed with a jolly nature, and the rest in HP. Choice Scarf set with Moxie, moves being Earthquake, Knockoff, Outrage, and Taunt. Now, Earthquake is rather spammable against my opponent. He does have two Grass types, but I don't think Eggy is coming. Serena is like a maybe in my book. It is good against some of my Pokemon, but not great against others. Uh, if Serena comes and if Skarm comes, then Crocodile's job becomes a lot harder and a lot less necessary because I can't Earthquake spam to, you know, clean up the game with Moxie Scarf. But I do need Crocodile because it does play a very important role this week as it deals with Gengar offensively. With a little bit of chip, this thing can knock out Gengar through G-Max, which is absolutely amazing. If I went Adamant, I could just knock it out on one hit, but I felt like going Jolly to outspeed Scarf Reggie Draco, because that Pokemon is very scary, and any way I can weaken Dragon Energy, I'll do it. So a knockoff only does like half the Reggie Draco, but it makes Dragon Energy not a threat at that point. So that's why I went Jolly in the end, but I still think Crook can put in a bunch of work. It just, I have to be really careful with what they bring in, like defensive Skarmory, it can't do too, too much. And basically, just that's going to be Crook's job this week, is to revenge things and knock stuff off. And maybe Earthquake Sweep. We'll see, though. Next up is going to be Sigilyph. This is an interesting mon on the team. This is max HP, max speed with a timid nature. Holding the Cassie Berry, moves being Calm Mind, Cosmic Power, Stored Power, and Roost. Now, I mentioned earlier, my opponent does not have a Dark type. So right now, Sigilyph's matchup looks amazing. This is my second win con if Charizard doesn't end up working. It really just depends on what my opponent brings. If my opponent brings stuff like Serena, uh, even a little Eggy, uh, Skarmory without Whirlwind, I can Cosmic Power or Calm Minds in front of all of those and then have a good time. If my opponent doesn't bring many things I can set up on, then Sigilyph doesn't become as important. I definitely need boosts in order to do something in this game. Cassie Berry beats a Gengar that is not G-Max. Unless Gengar hasn't G-Maxed yet, I do beat Gengar in a 1v1 every time. Though again, I still have to be a little bit weary of you know the G-Max portion of that. 
I have max speed because that speed ties Urshifu, and for whatever reason, Jorge doesn't speed creep his Urshifu often. He just puts max speed, which sucks a little bit, but you know, it is what it is. I cannot live a banded surging strikes if that's what my opponent decides to bring, so I decided to go max speed and just maybe speed tie if I have enough boosts already, because surging strikes ignores all the boosts because it crits every, every time. That's why I did that in the end. I would have much preferred to have some bulk into this thing, but for the matchup, couldn't quite do it. I still think this thing could do a lot of work if they bring stuff like the Skarm and Serena and stuff. So that's Siglyph. Our fifth Pokemon is Rotom Wash. This thing has an absolutely amazing matchup. It's max HP, max defense with a bold nature, holding the Rocky Helmet, standard moveset of Volt Switch, Hydro Pump, Defog, and Pain Split. Now, this is amazing because it checks Urshifu and it hard counters Darm, Skarm, Palaswine, and Carbink. Now that's big because I mentioned earlier, that's his rockers. Skarm, Pilo, Carbink, those are his three rockers right there. And the fact that Rotom destroys all three makes it to where he cannot get rocks up reliably in this game, which is amazing. That makes Charizard really viable late game. I can defog the rocks. Volt Switch is very free because the only immune mod is Palaswine, and again, it's a Rotom. And Pain Split's really nice because he has a few high HP mons like the Darm, like the um, Reggie Draco. The uh, Serena has decent HP, and Pain Split would keep Rotom healthy. And Rocky Helmet's good for a chip on the Surging Strikes. Uh, or Shifu, Darmanitan clicking a button, uh, Serena U turning. I don't know where that came up from, but Rotom Wash is pretty decent. And we can move on into our final Pokemon, which is Frostlass. Frostlass is holding the choice specs, absolute max speed with max special attack with a timid nature, moves being Ice Beam, Shadow Ball, Destiny Bond, and Switcheroo. I also mentioned earlier, like the dark typing thing, that my opponent does not have a ghost resist, so I do see myself clicking Shadow Ball. Uh, the plan is to use Frostlass really early just to break through my opponent's team, uh, Crook to revenge some things, and then Charizard or Sigilyph clean late game. And I think Frostlass, while it doesn't really hit that hard, like I was doing some calcs and they were kind of underwhelming, this does two co everything on my opponent's team and, you know, one shots and some things, except for the Palaswine and Carbink. And that's fine because those are my opponent's only Charizard checks. So if I can weaken those Pokemon, then I'll be quite fine. Max speed to speed tie with Gengar and the Espeon. And that's really all the notes I have for Frostlass, and that's all the notes I have for this team builder this week. I did all six at w once as opposed to uh, cutting it up and editing, so we'll see how that's going to look when I you know, rewatch this a little bit later. One more time, make sure to go check out Sir Jorge. I do plug him a lot at the end of the recording, but you know this was a really tough battle to get through, and I have mad respect for him for helping me through this. Uh, so make sure to go check out his side of the battle as well. It should be going up around the same time that mine does. If not, his will be first probably. But that's all I have to talk about that I haven't talked about already. I will see you guys in the battle. Alright, so here we are in the battle. Good luck, have fun to Sir Jorge. I am on a new setup, just want to say it right here. So things are going to be a little bit different. Uh, but it's going to be the same. I'm going to knock off like notes like Palaswine's not here for example, Alolan Eggie's not here and hopefully everything goes well. I'm also recording at a slightly higher resolution. No Reggie Draco which is amazing. Uh, no Galvantula and no, I'm a little shocked with that, no Espeon. I think I got everything else. Yeah, that is six Pokemon. So yeah, definitely a little bit shocked about no Reggie Draco. I was initially going to lead off with Frostlass, <clears throat> excuse me, and I still think I'm going to do that, because the only thing that he can possibly switch in is Carbink, and if I lead off against a lot of things, I'm willing to sack my Frostlass to get damage, so that's exactly what I'm going to do, and we'll go from there. I think that's what I want to do. Yeah, let's talk in, let's talk in, we're ready, and while I wait, I can cross out my notes as you know I always do for my battles my keyboard's louder my mouse is closer to my mic so we'll see if that really makes a difference in this recording here I know Pilus went a little shocking I know Galvantula was shocking so he's still choosing can do this all right so good luck have fun to Jorge I see that we're starting 
and we'll see what they want to lead off with. I only have one monitor, so I have to like kind of hover over the thing and all. It makes it a little bit harder, but not a big deal. Uh, they're going to lead off with Urshifu, probably the biggest threat to my team. I am immediately going to stay in and Shadow Ball because I want to get chip on this. I am totally going to sack my Frost S turn one to get good damage on this thing because once this thing's damaged, it's not the biggest threat to my team. So we will Shadow Ball and we'll see what they want to do. It doesn't kill, but it does a solid like 65-ish percent as they're going to stay in. They're not Scarf, which is nice. And yeah, that does so much damage. And they just U-turn, which is amazing for me. So I'm going to be able to live another day. That brought me down to 98. That did a decent chunk. And we can maybe calc that, but I'm still doing all this extra nonsense here. I think I got all my notes. Everything of... Yeah. I think they're going to go on a carving. At least that's what I think they're going to do. See, that brought me down to 98. So that did. That's banded, I think. I think that's banded, so I definitely gotta watch out for that. I'm really glad I stayed in and did that turn one. Because I do not have a switch into banded or Shifu. As they're gonna go out into the carbink? Yeah. I sort of figured this would be the switch in. That carbink's got a really cool shiny. And as much as I want to stay in and just attack this thing, I'm actually going to switch out and go out into Rotom, I believe. I think that's the play. Yeah, because I don't want them getting up rocks. I do not have heavy duty boots on my Charizard, so I can never allow them to get rocks up. Rotom is pretty important in this game, so not exactly what I want to do, but it might be what I have to do. Is I can just throw up rocks. So yeah, this is exactly what I wanted to do. I'm pretty sure Defog still works on this thing. I know it has clear body. Let me see. Let me try it out. If I'm going to feel really stupid if I defog and it just fails. I know the evasion will be lowered. Oh, but they have sturdy, so it does actually work. Okay. Wait. No, there's clear body. Okay, so yeah, the, the stones still disappear. And they just throw up a light screen. Okay, not what I was expecting, but I'm cool with that. And I'm just going to hydro pump to get damage on this thing, I believe. Who do they have again? Yeah, I'm cool with that. I don't have the greatest switch into Serena, but I'm okay with pumping into Volt Switching. As they're going to try and take this. I mean, they are going to take it. Fine. But chip on this is really good. That really does nothing. Oh my goodness. As they throw off a Toxic. So the Rock's Toxic Light Screen. Honestly, what stops me from clicking Cosmic Power with um, my uh, Sigalith right now? Not much. I think that's what I'm going to end up doing. And I'll just have to defog later, I think. Well, hold on. How many turns of uh, light screen do they have? They have three. I think I'll still just volt switch. Yeah, I'll volt switch. Oh, as they switch out, so I think I made the right play this turn. They go out into the Serena, so yeah, that definitely worked. Okay. With a light screen, how much are you taking? You took like nothing from that. Oh my goodness. A part of me wants to go out into the Frost Slash and just fire off an Ice Beam. Uh, rocks are up. Wait, no, they're not up yet. So... It's either Sickliff and Cosmic Power or Frost Ice and Ice Beam. I think. Hmm. I think I want to go Frost Last first. Yeah. As good as this is against their team, I'm willing to just get a little bit more chip with Ice Beam and sack it off to the knockoff. I'm cool with it. Or I could Destiny Bond and potentially get rid of this thing. But I think Ice Beam is just going to be a little bit better. Because I want to set up a Cosmic Power on this thing. So we'll Ice Beam. And sack the Frost Last to the Serena. This should, this should still do like around half. That is very bulky. That might be AV. 
as they knock off. And I'm going to die? Yeah. So Frostlass dies. But it did it came here what it, it did what it meant to be here for. So with them being A V. Hmm. I think this is where I go into Siglyph and Cosmic Power. I think. It will because the only way they can really beat this is if they win a speed tie with their Shifu. And if they if their Gengar G Maxes. Like a regular Gengar will not beat me. But a G Max one will, because they will knock off my Cassie Berry. Uh, I shouldn't do a crazy tongue because I will get this cosmic power off. Yes. We'll see here. They go for U-turn, so this isn't really gonna do anything to me. That does a little bit more than I would have liked it to. And we'll see what they're gonna go out to. I feel like it's gonna be the it's either gonna be Urshifu or Gengar. It's going to be the Urshifu. Ooh, now this is tough. Okay. Light screen wore off. I'm at 143. Do I live? I don't live abandoned. No, I don't live. I think what I want to do is go out into Rotom. Because this thing is still super good against their team. And if I can knock out the Urshifu with my Rotom, that would be amazing. Because I have Rocky Helmet, and I feel like they're going to want a Surging Strike here. It's the only way they can actually knock me out. I could have always stayed in and risked that speed tie, but I felt like it wasn't worth it. Because Siglyph can still set up on a lot of things. If they go for CC, good play. Surging Strikes. Okay, so unless they're Protective Pads, which I really do not think they are, this will knock out. Yeah, okay, so uh, I will knock it out with the Rocky Helmet. Nice. Alright, so Urshifu dies. That was like the biggest threat to my team. And that's nice. So we can get rid of all of this off of my notes. Urshifu's down. And now Sigalith looks like better now. But getting rid of that was really big. Rotom is like really good in this game. Yeah, they go out into this arena. That was probably a smart play because I don't <laughs> really have a switch into this. As I am going to switch out. I want to go Ferrothorn. What's Ferrothorn doing? It's really good for Gengar still. That's all That's all he really does in this game though. It's really good for that. Yeah, I'll go on to Ferrothorn. If they go for High Jump Kick, good play. If they go for U-Turn, that's fine as well. It's also more chip. We haven't disconnected though, which is pretty cool. As here we go. So I think this Serena is gonna have a uh, grass move, a high jump kick, knock off U turn. Again, if they go for HJK now, really good play. If they go for U turn, that's cool. That is more Iron Barge chip and permanent chip on this, I think. I do have leftovers. They can only go out into Skarm or Darm. I don't believe Skarmory has rocks at this point, so I don't really have to worry about that, and then I think Darm's gonna end up coming out. I'm fine with this U-turn cycle they got going on, because I have Rocky Helmet on Rotom, and the Iron Barbs on Ferrothorn, so not too worried about it. As they go out into Darm and Antenna, I just sort of figured. Now, a part of me wants to protect, but if this is like Belly Drum, I can't let him a Belly Drum, so... I want to switch out first into Rotom. And I think that's what I'm going to end up doing here. Uh, yeah, I believe that's what we're going to end up doing. They might want to just prioritize getting rid of Rotom here. But yeah, we'll go Rotom first. Uh, next time, if they like, just U-turn out here, then next time I will protect on Ferrothorn and the Scout to see what they'll do. I think this thing's gonna be Scarf though. As it's Flare Blitz. Okay, so I probably should have protected, but I don't think it's gonna make a difference. They're gonna take Recoil, they're gonna take Rocky Helmet. Though it does two Komi, this chip. So that's a little bit uh, concerning. 
Do I want to save this thing? I don't think I need to save this thing, because I think I just go hard Charizard on Carpink. And then after, yeah, so. As much as I want to save it, I don't think I can. But I will paint Spit for the off chance that they, like, switch out. But I think they're just going to stay in Flare Blitz and tank the, the recoil and all that stuff. Oh, we actually have draws. Okay, that's actually amazing for me. Because I Volt, uh, I didn't Volt Switch, I Pain Split it. Okay. You didn't want to take the extra chip? Maybe, but I don't get a crazy ton back here, but it might be enough. Okay, that's I'm cool with that actually. I really am. Alright, now I okay, so I get to save this thing. I will switch out here. Either into Sigilith or Ferrothorn. A part of me really <laughs> wants to go um into Sigilith this time around. How much is this thing doing to me? Serena. Actually, that's not that bad. I'm gonna go actually into the Sigilith this time. And I will roost up if they knock off. Oh, okay, we switch out. This might be the biggest turn of the battle, by the way. I want to mention. As knockoff has he just used turns, okay. Not exactly what I want to see, but I think that's better than knockoff. Probably should have went out into Ferrothorn, though I guess keeping health on Ferrothorn is fine. Now, I'm not exactly sure what they're going to do here. They might try and go Gengar now. I am Kassid Berry, so there is a chance I live the hit. Oh, my screen went black, jeez. Because <laughs> my opponent is going to go into Gengar. Okay. Uh, this is a threat to my team. What I'm actually going to do is hope that I live the Shadow Ball in Stored Power. I know I have no boosts, but if I get any type of damage on this thing, then Crook should always come in and revenge it. So I'm not too, too worried. I think at least. Oh, two dynamics. Um, yeah. So we're just going to Stored Power here. Just so I can get my damage. If he lives the, the hit... It's gonna suck, but I think it's gonna be okay. Or what did I say? Wait, if he um, if he knocks me out without me getting damage, it's fine. Obviously not ideal, but it's fine. He reflect what types? What? That is a very interesting tech. Okay. I don't think it's really going to matter still, but we will see. They curse body my stored power. That's very annoying. Uh, okay, that's really not a big deal. Because now they don't have stab on their move. So what I do here is... I think I roost. Yeah, let me roost. He sludge bombs. Does he not have anything to hit this? Well, that does a lot. And he poisons me, not the end of the world. I don't think he has the uh, Shadow Ball, actually. Um, I didn't see how much that did. Uh, I think I just roost one more time. Or do I cosmic power? Let me roost one more time and then I'll cosmic power the following turn. So he's got reflect type, sludge bomb, thunderbolt. That does a lot. That, is that a crit? That was not a crit. That just killed. Okay. Uh, he didn't dynamax, which is a little bit unfortunate. I kind of would have preferred him to do that. But what I do here is go out into Crook and knock off. Alright, so Crook comes out. 
there is a good chance it doesn't kill, and that would be really sad, but I don't need Crook for my late game. It'd just be really nice to have it still. So force the knockoff here. Again, as soon as I force out this Dynamax, like the quicker I force it out, the better, because once this Dynamax is gone, Charizard very confidently beats the Gengar, the Serena, the Skarmory, and a Darm locked in the Flare Blitz. So that's like almost everything. I could have played Sigilyph a little bit better, but my opponent played in a way where they always kept something that could do so much damage to it in. So that's Sir Hohoi doing a really good job there. As they actually switch out, so they're going to go on the Skarmory here. Yeah. That is Skarmory. We'll knock off whatever it has. That is very defensive. It's Aya Papa Berry. I'm going to switch out. I'm at 43. I do not think I live. Not after Toxic, I do not. So he probably just really body presses. I really want to go on the Charizard. But a Braver does so much to me. I need Charizard. I really need Charizard's health in this game. Actually, no, we're gonna go Charizard. He's not going to click Braver here. I really doubt it. If he clicks Braver, then bravo. Okay, so we switch out. There we go. It took forever. If they go for Braver, that's worst case. If they go for Tailwind, that's actually pretty bad too. Uh, okay, that's that's bad. I don't think I have to Dynamax here. In fact, I'm not going to. I think I just Flamethrower. Yeah, I'll Flamethrower. If Carbon comes out, it's annoying, and I feel like it's going to, but it's not the biggest deal in the world. Again, the more chip, the faster I process getting Carbon out of this battle, the better it is for me. It's just going to be really tough because I... Might, I have to keep rocks off the field at this point. Wait, I avoided the attack? What did I miss? What happened? Uh, I knock out Skarmory. Did I? Did he just go for rock slide? Uh, let me let me message him. I didn't see. I didn't see what he clicked. Oh, I, I'm gonna feel so bad if that's what happened. All right, so Carbon comes out. Yeah, this thing's really high health still. So what I'm going to do is go... Did I go Crook and Earthquake? Like, what's that? Oh, well, the Tailwind. Two turns left still. I don't really see what stops me from doing that. I think I'm okay with rocks up at this point. So yeah, we'll just go into Crook. So yeah, we'll switch out. If rocks are up, it's annoying, but it's not the end of the world. It really isn't. He goes for light screen. That is literally the best thing that I could have asked for. Because he has no earthquake switch, and Serena should get two, co two code. And that is the button I will click. So things just took a turn for the good here. Uh, connection seems to be stabling up a bit, which means all of a sudden I have to start moving fast again with my uh, my thought processes here. But damn, that really sucks that he missed that. He does withdraw. I believe Serena should be two shot. I think. Let's see. That's a two shot. Now is the tail one gone? Yeah, tail one's gone. And I'm scarf, so I always earthquake still. So that's gonna work. All right, so we finally move, and this is going to knock out the Serena. Yeah. Okay. So he has to go Darm, and at this point, 
even, he's gonna click U-turn probably, but it really shouldn't matter. My screen went black again. See, that sees how long we've been um, waiting for. Because I knock out Gengar and Carbink, and Darm has to come out. I just sack over time at this point. I don't really need as much. Charizard's really helpful, but I don't necessarily need it for this last portion of the game because Earthquake is a slight roll to not knock out Gengar, and if I lose Crook, I could lose the game still. As yeah, this thing's forced to come out. And I always switch out. And I go into the Rotom. Best case scenario, he knocks me out. Because then I get Crook back in for free. Oh, that was pretty, that was actually really quick. I don't have to cut there. As Rotom Wash is gonna come out on this Darm. They click the U-turn button. I kind of hope I die here. I think Toxic knocks me out, but Rocky Helmet Chip's really nice. Actually, if they go Gengar and Reflect Type me, that could be a really big issue. Which I think they're gonna do. <laughs> yeah. Wait, it depends if I die here. I live on one. And you know what? I think I Pain Split. Pain Split or Volt Switch? This thing does not get levitate, so I don't think even um, if he reflect tights me, it's not even gonna matter. So what I do here is always Volt Switch, I think. Yeah. Paint Split's nice, but I don't need it to be doing that. I'd rather Rotom not be in here. If he knocks me out, he knocks me out. Not a big deal. As he just knocks me out. He actually does have Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball, Sludge Bomb, Thunderbolt, reflect tight. He doesn't have anything to hit Crook, so I actually just can just go Crook for free here. Even if it doesn't knock me out at this point, it's not a big deal. You can't reflect type because I'm faster. I'm really glad he showed me that last move. That was like really big that he did that. And I just earthquake. He's gonna G-Max here. If he lives, he lives really. He actually just switches out. He's gonna sack Carbink. Yeah, he's gonna sack Carbink. Okay. So at this point, Charizard should just win. If this, it, it doesn't matter if it doesn't knock out. I'll knock it out the next turn as he just dies. Okay. Get a Moxie boost. All right, Darwin Antan comes in. Not a big deal. I just go and sack Ferrothorn. And this is taking a really long time. Uh, I have officially been recording for an hour and nine minutes. Obviously, for you guys, this will not be an hour and nine minutes. I will do editing to cut this down. But if, like, my last sentence from before it cut out, like, communicating took forever, and the next time doesn't match, then that's just because there was so much time in between. Because we've been waiting so long for a lot of these turns. As, yeah, so. I always switch out into the Ferrothorn and sack it off. Alright, so we finally move again. We're going on the Ferrothorn, just sack it. We'll see what Sir Jorge wanted to do here. They go for a U-turn, so okay, a little bit annoying, but that's fine. They'll take the Iron Barbs chip. They go into Gengar. And what I do is, I think Garibald wants. Just again, I need chip on the Gengar, just a little bit. I don't really even need it, it just makes life easier. There we go, the Gengar finally comes out of his Pokeball. I was a little bit scared, but it came out. And I just got a ball here for a little bit more chip. It's not, I can't, that took so, that was like one of the longer ones we've had today. So, um, I got a ball this thing. If Dar At this point, if Darm comes, on, comes in on the Gyro Ball, it sacks itself out. So yeah, it reflects types, I sort of figured he'd do that. But I don't really care to be honest. This should still do like 30% at least. That does like half, like definitely. A little bit less than half, like 45-ish percent. That's so much damage. Yeah, yeah, okay. And I just, I think I just clicked Gyro Ball again. Yeah, I just spam Gyro Ball here at this point. Even if he G-maxes, I mean, he's gonna live the hit regardless if he G-maxes or not. He can't one-shot me. 
If Darm comes in, Gyro Ball into the Flare Blitz chip he will take will knock himself out. Crook beats Gengar at this point. Charizard beats both Mons, honestly. Unless Darm's locked into Rock Slide, but again, I don't really care too much. That one turn went by really fast, which is nice. Oh, okay, so that was actually really fast. Then I don't think I even need to... I, I will cut, but it wasn't too long of a wait there. He is going to G-Max. He's definitely going to live this Gyro Ball fine. Anything I can do to put this in range of Earthquake is just really nice. As you know, cool looking G-Max. This was a very scary Pokemon to prep for. I am not going to sugarcoat it. This thing is very scary. He's going to G-Max Terror. He can't do anything else against me. This probably doesn't even two-shot. No, it doesn't. Not even close. Okay. That is such a cool animation, though. That is so cool. Alright, so I don't even need any chip on this anymore. I'm just going to put up rocks, to be honest. Because <laughs> why not? We will throw up rocks. Just so Darm takes more damage. GMAX Terror again. It'd be nice if I lived this, just so we can stall out all three turns. Yeah. Of Dynamax. I throw up rocks, and now I spam Gyro Ball, because there is nothing else I could do here. I don't want to protect, there's no point in just making the battle a little bit longer than it needs to be. Darm can't even switch into rocks into Gyro at this point. And we should be good to go. Do you guys know my kill leader prior to this week was Crocodile? I had 7 kills with that thing, and that doesn't sound like a lot, but... You know, sharing is caring on my team with kills. And I was just shocked because I really felt like Crook hasn't done a crazy ton this uh, season. But, you know, I guess it has. I do die to that, which is actually great for me. So Ferrothorn's going to drop. I go Crook. And click Earthquake. And knock this thing out. Even with the Grass Steel typing, it still dies. as the G-Max is going to end. And we are going to click the Earthquake button. I mean, we, we are going to find out if... Um, we're going to knock this, this thing out. We're going to find out if I actually live the Flare Blitz the entire time from full health. It's a roll. It's like a 50-50 roll if he's not adamant. If he's adamant, then I don't. And if he's not Scarf, I just kill it. <laughs> but... I can tell you guys the roll, one second. Jolly, 93 to 110. And here is the Darm. We're just going to stay in and click Earthquake. We're going to find out the moment of truth if I he would have killed me in one hit or not. Uh, he's going to kill himself to recoil, I think, anyway. So this will be... Okay, he clicks for a Litz, and let's see if we live this hit. Crocodile is not gonna live. It does die. It was Scarf Darm, obviously, and he's going to be knocked out to recoil. So we are going to win 1 0 against Sir Jorge. I want to let you guys know big shout out to Sir Jorge. He stuck in with me. We are an hour and 31 minutes into this recording. Obviously, I'm going to edit this a crap ton, so I'm gonna have fun doing that this week. But please make sure to go check him out. He makes great content. Uh, best thumbnail maker in the entire community. Uh, again, and he's stuck through with me the entire way here. He's very been very respectful, and he, again, make good content. So please go check out his channel. I can't plug him enough. And thank you for giving me this battle, despite the conditions we have been battling under. Uh, we both have new setups. I have a brand new computer. Setting it up with LAN is a little bit hard, and he's got he just moved into his college dorm, and his internet, he hasn't connected to the, uh, I don't think he's connected to the college Wi-Fi yet, so he's on a hotspot. So, big shout-outs to Sir Jorge. Uh, we're going to move up to 8-1, and one, I believe, which is actually insane. I do not remember who we take on next week. I want to say Talon, but I don't want to, you know, I'm not guaranteed. But that's going to be it for this recording. Thank you guys for watching so much, and I will see you next week for my next UPA battle. Peace out, guys.